Alright, now for real. Hi, hello and welcome. This is gonna be a video and I've been saying this, many people are saying this for a while already, but this is gonna be a video that is not gonna be heavily edited or maybe not even edited at all. We are just gonna have ourselves a little fun daily run today together in this game, Soulstone Survivors. Let's try out the Arcane Weaver. Let's try out the Arcane Weaver with this upgraded weapon, Ignis, Great Stuff of Despair. And this video is gonna be not edited at all, or almost not edited. It's just gonna be a little daily Soulstone Survivors run, and it's gonna be uploaded on top of another upload, or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Turn down my volume a little bit. What does that mean for us? Huh? What does that mean for us that this is just going to be a random daily upload with less editing? It means there's going to be rambling. It also means there might be a lot more flubs than you're used to. And the same sentence is going to be said four times or something, probably. It means a lot more pronunciation mistakes. It means a lot more grammatical mistakes. It means a less perfect video. But what does it also mean on the positive side of things? It means more videos. Recently, when we recorded the podcast, me and my buddy Steph, I realized the benefits of not having to edit the video at all. It still takes a bunch of time to render it, don't get me wrong, because I need to have them always in like the, the same format for uploading on YouTube, so I don't upload my raw video files, I always still render it so that every video is similar in that front. But it's just such a... In such an immense time save to not have to go through the entirety of the video again, listen to my rambling for 20 minutes when I record it for 20 minutes, cut that down to 50 minutes. No, when I oh, that's also just staying in, you know, you're getting the real me right now. When I can just maybe add the intro and add the outro at the end and then just press the render button, it just saves me so much time, it saves me heaps of time and it allows me. Mm, and it allows me to upload a whole bunch more. We are going for a bit of a speed run build. As I told you guys in the last episode, I have been indulging into the into the Discord of this game lately, and a lot of people in there are, sp are speed running fanatics. Some of them even getting as low as six minute clears, or like a, a bit over six minutes, but way under seven minutes. And that's something I'm striving towards right now because that is just so cool. Let's go for the multicast. Let's go for the magnetic. A part of getting a speed run is of course also leveling up quickly so that you can get stronger. So magnetic is not that bad, I think. Even though it's quite paradoxical, it's quite counterintuitive because I mean it's a skill that doesn't necessarily give you more active damage in that specific second. But you need to think about the future as well, you know. Think about long-term investments. I think I'm going to try and go for more all-around upgrades so that every skill that we possess is going to be able to damage quite a lot and not focus on specific skills for this one. All I'm trying to do here is trying to complete this run as quickly as possible. Because of course, if I upload unedited videos and I have a 20-minute run, it's going to be a 20-minute video. That's both going to be Fire Pillar, that's new. Dealing and applying melting, reducing the armor. That sounds great for Lord killing. If we can reduce the Lord's armor, so that's awesome. Let's try. Let's try that. Fire pillar. Never seen that before. Some of the characters have their own unique skills related to the weapon they use, of course. So maybe I just literally did not have the chance to see it before. When it's a legendary power, I'll make an exception. I'll still go skill specific because those are sometimes just game changing. And I would like to upgrade my fiery missiles active skill. How have you guys been doing today and, and the previous days, I guess? There's a lot of content coming out on my channel right now. And there's some diversity in there, which I absolutely love. Just today we have uploaded a more psychology sporkle video, something I'm really happy with, really proud of. Whoa, look at my damage. Look at my damage. All right. Leviathan again. We don't need speed because we're staying in that same corner. And we can just use all the damage that we can get. Yeah, Psychology Sporkle. Great series of videos in my opinion. Just because it helps me to... It helps my quizzing mind a bit. It helps me develop my way of thought when I that I would need for going quizzing. And it also helps me to showcase some of my psychology knowledge that I had. 
This time around, I delved into the field of developmental psychology, which is not necessarily a field I am such, I am so well versed in, you know, it's something I studied in two courses throughout two years of my university education, but I don't remember everything from it because, I mean, it's not the most interesting part. I guess it's important, especially because it's so universal, you know, every person develops, every person grows up, every person gets an education and gets a lot of information socialized to them from their parents, from peers, from other figures in their life like teachers. So it's quite important. Unedited videos are also going to include a lot more of me breathing in, so take care. If you don't mind that, I'm very sorry, but I uh, see it as an ASMR experience, okay? But yeah, no, it was... I, at, the, at the time I was following the course, it was a bit harder to really see the importance of it because it was not my favorite, It was they were not my favorite professors, they were not my favorite teachers, not my favorite members of the educational personnel at the university, so that didn't help my interest out either. And I also just related it to children mostly because, I mean, of course, it is mostly related to children, right? Development and the way that we get socialized into learning about the world, about cultures, about structures in society, also about like um, cultural phenomena and things like that. It's a lot more important when we are still learning a lot and when we are still getting, well, when we are still growing up, when we are still maturing. So, because my interest is actually focused on the world of adults, I am a clinical psychologist for adults and elderly people, it was quite hard for me to pay that much attention to developmental psychology. And additionally, the teacher in the second year had this very weird German accent. I mean, I don't judge him for that because, I mean, of course, he has a German accent, accent because he is a German person originally, but it made it quite hard to pay attention sometimes as well. And he was, I mean... Uh, I'm not gonna use the C word, I don't think it was that bad, but he wasn't the most considerate teacher out there, let's leave it at that, yeah, that's, I think that's a nice description of his attitude towards his students, and maybe just with one little small anecdote to prove my point a bit, in the middle of the COVID crisis, this was after I already had him, so this was not in my class, because I was already... I, was, I already passed his class, I finished his exam with the greatest honors, with the greatest of ease as well. I should have taken cost frequency there. But he sent a mail to the year after us, or maybe two years after us, when he was asked to put the lectures online because some people were not able to reach the auditorium because of COVID and stuff. And all he did was say like, hey, you just need to come to class. I know that people right now, this is quite a literal translation of what he said, by the way. I know that people lately are a bit of pussies and they like to stay at home underneath a, a warm little blanket with their mommies. But this is the real world. You, real world. You need to come to class. Delusional. Unbased. That's not a based take at all. Should have taken Leviathan there as well. Not based, no. Based would be, hey, it's a global pandemic. I realize that getting to class can be hard for some of you. I'll put the lectures online for sure. Good that you asked me. That's based. And that's just being considerate, being a general nice human being. And that ties into that God complex thing that I was talking about when I was making my points on why people should be allowed to use their computers in class. I feel like teachers sometimes forget that they are not really on a pedestal. In reality, they are just mortals like the rest of us, just mere mortals, if I might add. If they would look into Medusa's eyes, we would both just be turned into stone, you know? It's not like they have some immunity because they are children of Zeus. Even though it's possible, of course, because Zeus like to fuck around, so everybody could be a child of Zeus for that matter. He betrayed his wife a whole lot. Interesting stories, though, in Greek mythology, that's for sure. I'm not that well versed in that field. I have lately been studying a bit of Egyptian gods on my phone using the Anki app and that is also for just quizzing purposes. I can tell you that the god of wind is for example Shu. I can tell you that Tefnut is the goddess of rain I believe. Uh, what else can I tell you? There's definitely more in my mind but they are escaping me already for a while. It's been a while since I uh, used the Anki app on my phone. The app I did use this morning, though, is this crazy little bowling game. I don't know why, but later this evening I'm going bowling with my cousin. This is not a GTA 4 cosplay episode, no, I'm sorry. But I'm going bowling with my cousin and I felt like I wanted to warm up. 
it, that's, that makes no sense at all. Using your little finger on your phone screen is not gonna help you out at all in warming up for actual bowling, where you... It's kind of a, a full body sport, really, bowling. You need to have the right form, you need to have a run up, you need to have the right arm swing maneuvers, you need to have the right liver capacities for the drinking in between. It's a joke, of course, you don't need to drink while going bowling, but we like to delve into a pint or two, you know what I'm saying? Just having a little pint of Guinness with the lads. We don't actually drink Guinness, we drink the beer of Leuven, Stella. Beautiful little pills, beautiful little lager, beautiful little whatever the correct English term is for the type of beer it is, but yeah. Not that I'm drinking that much lately. The fact that I am going for that 100 kilometers in October has definitely made me more conscious of my health in general a bit. And I try to eat a bit better, drink a bit better, and that involves consuming less alcohol. Because at every age, at every stage of life, in every context, alcohol is always going to be bad for you. And still, it's a drug. I don't want to be a stickler for that. I don't want to be like, oh, so there should be more rules about it and it should be prohibited from even a younger age. No, not that's not what I'm getting at. But I mean, you should consume it with care because it's always going to have a negative effect on you. Even if it's really small, it can stack up. And I think it can become exponential very quickly, especially if you get into the habit of drinking a lot, a lot of the time. But I mean, it's a story for another time. Whew, damn, yeah. So this is just natural me, huh? Just all my imperfections in speech still in there. I have a friend that is studying, like she is in the middle of studying to become a, a I don't know the English word in Dutch, it's a logopedist, and she has been criticizing my way of talking, my speech, my saliva production in the middle of my sentences a lot, so she's gonna have a field day in these videos probably, because it's just un 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 unedited right there there we go that's a prime example of what i mean but it maybe makes it also a bit more personal you know i'm putting myself in a vulnerable position i'm not editing out all my imperfections no you guys are getting me raw raw in the flesh raw in reality this is real this is me this is exactly what i'm supposed to be or something like that i think that's a song from like high school music or something high school musical or something a movie series that I never watched. I listened to some of the music when I was going out back in my younger years, when I was still a pubering adolescent with no care for the world at all. Right now I am an adult that delves into philosophical thinking instead of going to parties, of course. <laughs> Jarvis, Jarvis, could you please... No, I can't call up Jarvis anymore because this video is unedited. I have an idea. Jarvis... Could you please write down that I still have to read that Spinoza book later today? Very well, sir. Ah. <sighs> That's the stupidest I've probably felt in the entirety of my YouTube journey, but I hope it brought you a little laugh. A little smirk and a little smile on your face, a little curling up of those sides of your beautiful mouth. Mm, yes. That's exactly what I try to do, by the way. Bring smiles to people's faces, even if I have to make myself look like a fool to achieve that endeavor. That's definitely worth it. And it's an attitude that I have in life in general, not only in YouTube. I, I am most of the time the... The ridiculous friend, the person that you can actually never take seriously but because I'm always making jokes that are sometimes well received, sometimes they are just overly sexualized and therefore not well received at all and I can respect that, I mean. Sometimes I'm just not funny, I can also be annoying because I use recurring gags a whole lot, you can ask my girlfriend this, just uh, last night I was just saying the words gara masala like 15 times in a row even though it's just a form of spice but for some reason I found it funny. And it's also an approach that I also use in my job, or later in my job at least. Humor. Humor. Laughing at the world. Laughing at life. Laughing at life even at the darkest moments. And it can spark a little ray of light in there, you know? Laughing in the darkness can definitely spark a ray of light. I'm so poetic. Maybe it's this John Green book that I have been reading that has just been influencing my brain and my thinking capacities into thinking in poems, thinking in rhymes, thinking in rhyming schemes. Ah, oh, man, I'm so lucky that this unedited raw thought train, train of thoughts, is not 
convoluting my thoughts at all and i am just still based insane which is of course satire because as you can clearly hear by my talking i am going absolutely mental i think i did a good job of not focusing on specific skills though all of them are pretty low level and in general we just have higher crit chance higher cast frequency higher multicast frequency yeah i really did myself proud i set out to do a challenge and i completed it didn't complete it yet, but in like 3 seconds one this guy is, has been beaten down, the challenge will have been completed. And this video will just be done. No more work has to put into it. Just an intro and an outro, bit of a fade in, bit of a fade out, and then that's gonna be it. And it's gonna be awesome. I'm really gonna enjoy that probably. And I am really also enjoying the fact that you are still here and you sat through it all the way to the end. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> this was fun. Bye.